I'm John Ratzenberger. On this Made in America, we use a bull to blow some snow at the Toro factory in Wyndham, Minnesota. See the machines that make the machines at Bodine in my hometown of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And pause for a proper cup of tea in a proper tea factory in Celestial Season. I've been all over this great country, small towns and big cities, visiting factories and workshops, searching for the soul of America. And you know what? I found it everywhere. So sit back and relax, because we've got it made in America. One visit to southwestern Connecticut and you understand why so many hairy New Yorkers come here to escape the crime and bustle. It's a rustic paradise. But one Gold Coast city is more famous for smokestacks than for chimneys. Bridgeport, which has been a manufacturing mecca for more than 100 years. That makes it a fitting place to find a manufacturer that manufactures the machines that other manufacturers couldn't manufacture without. Welcome to the Bodine Corporation. Bodine is to manufacturing what trees are to paper. It doesn't make light switches and videotapes and lighters and spark plugs and whatever else you can think of. It makes the machines and engineers the processes that other companies use to make those things. And it's been doing that since 1933. Flip Bodine is the company's enthusiastic CEO. Yeah, we did obviously padlocks, wall switches, circuit breakers, duplex receptacles, spark plugs, seal injectors, cigarette lighters, power outlets, electric door locks, fuel pumps, fiber optic connectors, and high density telecommunications modules for your computer, soap pumps, trigger sprayers. It's hard for you to go into a store and buy a product with a trigger sprayer on it that wasn't assembled on a Bodine system. Oh, no. Videotape cassettes, of course, in the 1970s, um, 130 million Americans today own a video cassette player. Mm -hmm. um, video cassettes for us in the 1970s were a huge piece of our business. We built about 20 lines uh, to do video cassettes for you uh, pretty much all the manufacturing. To yes. Put this cassette itself together. Completely together. It's something of a historical irony that Bodine was founded thanks to the Great Depression. After the market crashed in 29, Alfred Bodine, Flip's grandfather, began buying machines from suddenly defunct enterprises and selling them to healthier ones. He bought the Anderson uh, Dye Machine Company in early 1933 and was convinced by the court-appointed accountant, Milton Friedberg, uh, to keep the company because he told him it was, a, it was a, a business that could make money. The new company's machines helped the electrical industry's workers make switches and sockets more efficiently. They succeeded so well that soon the concept of efficiency grew to include fewer workers. So Bodine's engineers created more complex machines to simplify the manufacturing process. It was called automation. Today, Bodine creates and maintains automated assembly lines for dozens of companies. So somebody comes to you with a product and says, look, <clears throat> we have to be able to put this together. Like, uh, That's exactly what happens. It could be a wiring device manufacturer, an automotive parts manufacturer, a manufacturer of anything that's used in very high volume. So you have the engineers here say, okay, the machine has to go like this, arm comes down, slaps a doohickey on it and a gizmo, sends it, it through to another whatchamacallit. And that's almost as simple as it is, John. The process begins with brainstorming sessions between designers and engineers who imagine blue sky scenarios of the most efficient way to manufacture something. From there, they work backwards, even if they have to invent gadgets that don't exist. For example, Al's job today is to line up some recalcitrant bearings in a metal tube. I get these little challenges where you try to try to create a process for something on a machine, OK? Uh -huh. So before we do anything, I, I try to prove it out to myself that it can be done. So what I did in this case, putting these balls in, I created a vacuum chamber for each side oh, cool. to load the balls. So once I have all the balls in this tooling here, I push this in. I shut the vacuum off, I pull this thing apart, right. and the balls stay in there. Then once you see it works, then you go and say, okay, we got the, we got the system. Now we can write a proposal to the customer that says, we know we can do this, and we can figure out from what Al's done how much it's going to cost. When Bodine gets an order for a new assembly machine, 
The operative word is new, meaning that it's likely to require dozens or even hundreds of custom parts. That's where Bodine's legions of artful machinists come in. There's nothing these guys can't make out of thin air. Dennis, looks like uh, you took off about 10,000. Yes, we did. Good man. Carry on. Flip Bodine's cousin Bill is the company's president. So he focuses on progress as a process. So what we have to do in a product like this, where there's this many components, we have to decide how we can break it up into sub-assemblies that are manageable. So in this case, we have the base sub-assembly with all the little levers and springs and tape guides. Then we have the cover assembly with the windows and the springs and the door. And then you have this assembly of the uh, hub and leader tape. Those are the three basic sub-assemblies. And then on the final assembly machine, we would bring all three together to make the finished product, which is a finished video cassette. Obviously, sub-assemblies have to be assembled on the assembly line, of course. Well, this is a demonstration machine. And what this is set up to do is to uh, let people understand the basic modular structure of the Bodine basic platform. Oh, it's a whistle machine. OK, so these are the camshafts here. Up, oh, you're going to stick. There's a light curtain here to protect people from. Oh, from doing stupid things like I just did. Let me restart it. This is the machine that picks something off an assembly line and drops it down to someplace. Yeah, these, did these. I do that again? That's it. You did it again. Many Bodine machines use some of the same basic components, like the pick and place, which conveys parts from here to there, the rollover to flip parts upside down or upside up, and the press, which must be short for pressure because it can pack a wallop. And then there's the inspection probe, which has the same tolerance for mistakes that Sister Mary Armbuster did. When you look at it, it looks so simple. It, like, that's oh, the whole idea. It. But it's not simple at all. Well, the trick is to keep the design of the tooling as simple as possible. A big part of our job is to take the overall assembly process and break it down into the simplest, most bite-sized pieces so that it's easy what to do. What if you have a big piece? I did it, did it again. again. I did it on purpose this time. I knew I went like that. No, I didn't. In a sense, Bodine provides turnkey solutions for manufacturers. So when John here gets through with this machine, the client will be able to make its spark plugs better, faster, and cheaper. This thing's full with, with gaskets. This machine inserts that gasket into that shell. Right. Then we inspect to make sure it's there. We do a safety inspection to make sure that the post is pressed all the way down inside. Who, who does the safety inspection? We do. But we you... check to make sure with a laser mic. I see it. So a laser is inspecting it. Yeah. 5,000 pounds of pressure inseparably bond the porcelain and metal. Now we go into the hot press. The hot press is using current to heat up. We heat this plug up. This band right here, when it heats up, we're putting a force on it. That force is collapsing this whole unit down into that gasket so you seal it. A camera inspects every weld and spots any defects, telling the machine to yank the mistake and trash it. Naturally, the finished machines have to be disassembled and packed for shipping to the new factory home. Once they get there, Bodine's engineers unpack, reassemble, and test them. And then all that's left is to go to work. These guys are geniuses.